G'day, Mark here from Haas Aviation Museum. I've just given the old girl a bit of a tub, the engineer's just finishing off the last bit of work, and today we're going to give this Tiger Moth an engine run. Today we're going to start the engine on our Tiger Moth. We'll do some checks on it and then take the aeroplane for a taxi run. First of all we need to get some fuel to the cylinders, so I'll turn the fuel on. Fuel is turned on. And then we'll prime the fuel line by opening this valve on the carburetor. Then, making sure the ignition is off, we need to pull the prop through four or five revolutions with the throttle open, and this sucks the fuel-air mixture into the cylinders ready to ignite. There is no electrical system on the Tiger Moth, so no electric starter motor or generator. The spark is provided by magnetos, and there is an impulse coupler on the front magneto that provides a high-power advanced spark for starting. When the switches go on, the engine is live. Once the engine is running, I'm looking for oil pressure rising, setting the throttle to 1000 RPM and checking the time. I need four minutes to warm the engine before I can conduct the checks. First I'm going to check the magnetos. Then check the output at full throttle. The aeroplane shakes around a bit because it really wants to go. I really need to hold the stick back at this point. And then return the throttle to the idle position. OK, the checks are complete. You can come aboard now, Bruce.
Tiger Moth is a two-seat, single-engine biplane developed from a series of aircraft that started general aviation in Great Britain after the First World War. Designed by Geoffrey de Havilland, the Tiger Moth was developed to meet a British Air Ministry specification for an ab initio training aircraft and first flew on the 26th of October 1931. It quickly became a commercial success, being exported to more than 25 countries and manufactured in seven countries, including Australia. The fuselage is a steel tube frame covered in plywood and fabric, and the wings are of wooden construction also covered in fabric. Tiger Moth is powered by a 130 horsepower Gypsy Major engine. When it started to become clear in the late 1930s that war in Europe was inevitable, the British government, realising that they would be short of trained pilots, set up the Empire Air Training Scheme, a plan to train pilots remotely in the Dominions. Training bases were established in Australia, Bermuda, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa and Southern Rhodesia. The Tiger Moth was used as the primary training aircraft in all of these countries and the scheme trained over 37,000 aircrew in Australia alone. By the time the Second World War broke out, Tiger Moths were being used by most Commonwealth Air Forces as the primary basic trainer. Between 1940 and 1945, De Havilland Australia built 1,085 Tiger Moths at its plants in Mascot and later Bankstown the engines being built by General Motors in Victoria. Some civilian-owned Tiger Moths were pressed into service by the Royal Australian Air Force at the start of the war, but the majority of the RAAF Tiger Moths were specifically built for them by de Havilland in Australia. In all, 861 Tiger Moths were used by the RAAF the remainder of the de Havilland Australia production run being delivered to the other Commonwealth countries participating in the Empire Air Training Scheme. It was the basic trainer for thousands of Australian pilots during the war and continued to be used for training in the RAAF until 1957. After the war, Tiger Moths were disposed of by the hundreds and many of them made their way into private ownership, the type forming the basis of the post-war civil flying movement. Many of these aircraft are still active today, including the Haas Tiger Moth, Delta Hotel Victor. Built in 1941, the Haas aircraft saw service with the Royal Australian Air Force in No. 5 Service Flying Training School based at Durand Quinty in New South Wales. I'm going to shut it down now. Terry for helping with the cameras, thanks to Bruce for swinging the prop, and thanks to Keith for help with the chocks and the fire bottle. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, and please consider subscribing.